The police threw questions at her while she sat in the back of the police car, feet firmly planted on the street. More than once they reminded her that she wasn't under arrest, she wasn't in any trouble, which only made it sound like she was in trouble. Anyway, she should have been. If she'd gotten out of bed faster, if she hadn't skidded out in her shitty car, if she'd just been better, Claire might not have had time to lug her toolbox into the house to tie a rope around the fan. But Meg had, and Claire did. And now Claire was dead, and the weight of it hung around Meg's neck, so heavy she could barely look up from the crumbling asphalt. Her parents stood on the curb, arms wrapped around each other. Her mom was still in her pajamas, sweatpants and a t-shirt from their one Disney vacation. So long ago, Meg didn't even remember it. But her dad had managed to get dressed. She could almost see him getting out of bed, checking the clock, and deciding it was better to dress to be ready for work. Because of course he would go to work after this. Wasn't hell or high water that could keep Brian Finch from the Sunshine Plastics plant so long as there was overtime to be got. It wasn't heartlessness, just a fact. There'd been months, damn near a full year, when the hours were piecemeal. Meg could always see the memory of those extra lean times in the corner of his eyes, even when he smiled, especially then. She watched her mom fall into him. They wobbled a little on their feet, but Dad kept them upright. Meg wondered if Claire's death would be the thing to reconcile them for good. Her parents were each other's bad habits, never divorcing despite years of sleeping in separate beds, of living entirely separate lives, tied together only by a mortgage refinanced too many times and a constantly dwindling bank account.